Babcock, but um, I, I I watched the podcast you were on a while back, and I didn't understand the whole the whole scenario of you like getting that call from your agent and you know saying, yeah. "Hey, look, do you really want me or not?" I, that's that's brutal, man. I don't know if you want to touch on that real quick, but. Yeah. Yeah. Like Babs, like in a nutshell, I got traded from Jersey to Anaheim. It was Mike Babcock's first um, year as a head coach in the NHL. And it actually had a great, that was the fucking worst finals ever. It ended up being in 2003, Anaheim, Babs fucked me. And I was in their organization while I got traded at the end, was playing Jersey in the finals. I'm like, this is a no win for me. I don't want, I don't want any teams to win. But Babs, like, (laughs) I had never met Mike Babcock. I wouldn't know him if he walked in the room for whatever reason. And this happens all the time. Like, it's not like it's just me, but for whatever reason, he didn't want anything to do with me. He fucking did not like me. And, and that was kind of the end of it. So down to Cincinnati, all that shit. He liked the, the one thing that like, you know, guys, you know, you got to get lucky with coaches and everything. I totally understand that. You know, the one thing that he did then that, that trying to fuck me, which really pissed me off was, you know, when I didn't, when he sent me down, you know, I was supposed to play. Like, this was kind of a fairly big trade. It was like Peter Sikora and I, obviously Peter Sikora was the big piece in the trade, but, you know, like I was supposed to play. And so when the media asked him, like, well, you know, why is Mike not here? You know, his response, which it, I ended, it ended up being so hard for me to shake. His response was, wow, he showed up. He wasn't in shape. Didn't seem like he wanted to be here. So we sent him down. I fucking showed up early. I was in great fucking, I mean, I wasn't fucking stupid. Like I realized that, you know, I didn't have a skill set where I could just roll into training camp and make the fucking team. Like I had to be in good shape and ready to fucking go. And so he said that to the paper and that ended up being a thing. Like, like when I got traded to Calgary, my first summer, so this was in the summer before 04, I would, you know, the year I I finished the last six games here, you know, year end meetings, and the gen- general manager, Craig's like, well, you know, we heard you don't like to work out, so we'd like you to stay here in Calgary. And I'm like, fuck, don't like to work out. That's all I fucking do in the summer. But I'm like, yeah. and, and Edible, I'm like, fine. I'm like, I'll stay here. No problem. I'm like, God. so I like tried to put that to bed. But anyways, I hated Babs. And then, yeah, when I got bought out by Columbus, uh, you know, I'm buddies. I just was hanging out with his daughters last night and their husbands, Ken Holland, who was the general yeah. manager. I go on golf trips with him, Ken all this shit. So at this time I had gone to one golf trip with Ken and Ken and I hit it off and I was ripping on Babs and he was laughing, not really saying anything, but anyways, just having a good time or whatever. And so when I get bought out, I don't think I'm going to get a contract agent the day before. He's like, you know, we might have to wait till August. I'm like, no, I get it. I'm like, you know, I think I can still play. I just, you know, one more chance. But I realized that it's like, lucky i'm gonna get one chance and if this doesn't work out i'm fucking done like it's it i'm not getting any more chances and so he's like yeah probably gonna be a few weeks i'm like yeah sounds good next day is july 1st five minutes into free agency phone rings it's my agent like what the fuck does this guy want i just talked to him yesterday and so i answer the phone and he's like hey he's like i got a contract offer for you i'm like seriously i go what is it he's like well one year one million bucks i'm like okay I, I, one way he's like yeah one way I go, well, who is it? He's like, Detroit. And always trust your gut. That's the one thing I learned out of this experience. I'm like, Detroit? So I'm like, I'm not going to fucking Detroit. I'm like, Babs is there. He's going to fuck me. He just wants to end my career. Now, my agent was a different agent from when I first had Babs. So he didn't know any of this shit. And so he's like, well, what do you mean? And so I tell him quickly. I'm like, man, there's only one reason fucking Babs wants me there, and that's to fucking end my career. And so he's like, wow, fuck Detroit. I'm like, just tell him, put him off. Like, just maybe somebody else will call, like, hopefully. And uh, he's like, well, Mike, Ken said you have 15 minutes to make up your mind. So this is five minutes into free agency. There isn't another fucking team that's even considering calling me for at least another month. And I got 15 minutes. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, Ken said you, you need to make up your mind in 15 minutes or the contract's gone. I'm like, for fuck's sakes. I'm like, I'll call you back. So I call Ken. Call Ken. I'm like, Ken, I would love to play in Detroit. I would love to play for you. I always, I'd love to play in Joe Lewis. I go, I, you guys always, you're making the playoffs. You got to play with Nick Lynch. I'm like, I would love to play in Detroit. But I'm like, you know what I think of your fucking head coach? Does he want me on the team or not? He goes, yeah. I go, Ken, do you believe him? He's like, I do. I go, are you fucking sure? He's like, yeah. I go, give me his fucking <laughs> phone number. So he gives me to the, to the GM. Are you fucking sure, man? <laughs> 
So I called Babs. I got 10 minutes left now. So I called Babs. I'm like, hey, Mike, it's it's Mike Commodore. Oh, hey, Commie. I'm like, I remember looking at the phone like, oh. <laughs> like I ain't your fucking buddy. But I keep it to myself. I'm like, hey, you know, Mike, look. I'm like, do you want me on your hockey team or not? We're 10 minutes into free agency here. I go, is it Ken that wants me and you don't? I go, I've ripped you in the paper. I go, do you want me on the hockey team or are you bringing me in to end my career? This is my last chance. I know it. I need to, I'd like to go somewhere where I get an opportunity. Are you going to give me an opportunity? Yeah, 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 Mike. We need a right-handed shot. Nick likes playing with a right-handed defenseman. We need a little bit of a physical presence, blah, blah, blah. I go, Babs, no bullshit. This is my last opportunity, like my last chance here. Do you, do you want me on the team? Yes. Hang up the phone. I'm like, man, this guy's going to fuck me. Call my agent. <laughs> he goes, well, what do you think? I'm like, he's going to fuck me. And he's like, well, what did he say? I'm like, well, he said that like Nick likes playing with a right-handed D. He's like, Mike, are you fucking kidding me? So then I started thinking about that. I'm like, man, what if I did get to play with Nick Lidstrom? All I'm going to have to do all year is get the puck and go D to D to Nick. I'm like, I'll have 25, 30 points. Fuck, maybe I get a <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, for sure. I'm back. Yeah. I'm so back. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take this guy at his word. I'm, he's going to give me an opportunity. I'm gonna, I didn't ask for anything special. or anything. I'm going to take him at his word. Fuck it. So I signed the contract. And right from the fucking word go, I was fucking out. Like, he was scratching me. He wouldn't even really let me practice. He was calling guys up from the minors, so I so he so I wouldn't play. Like it wow. was a fucking joke. And then you know, speaking of Jake Borachek earlier, so that was July first. Jake calls me like right at the beginning of August, and he's like, "Mike, what the fuck are you doing? What are you talking about, Jake?" He goes, "Detroit, you fucking hate Mike Babcock." I'm like, "I do hate Mike Babcock, but this is what he said." He's like, "Fuck, I just talked to Labby. We just talked about you. He's wondering why the fuck you signed there." Like, we would have called you. I'm like, God damn it. Miss yeah. Oh, again. God damn it. Oh, we could have had Kami. Fuck. Fuck. That would have been fun. <laughs> um, but, yeah. yeah, that's that's brutal, man. God. See, you so, think he yeah. went into that season del- deliberately trying to fuck you. Like, this is an opportunity to stick it to you some which way and just right out of the gate. Right, 100%. Like, it was. Yeah, hey, wow. It's fucking it amazing. A, oh, man. It was a joke. Like, I tweaked, I I played some exhibition games, which was fine. And then we opened up the season. I had tweaked my knee a little bit. Like I was out for like a week or something like that, like a little bit of a sore knee. And so I was like, I was uh, scratched, like injured. I want to say for like the first game or two. And we lost the first game. We lose the second game. I'm, I'm ready to go. Like I'm good to go. Scratch, scratch. Scratch, scratch, and just and, and we weren't really doing that well. Like it would have been. It's not like the team was winning. Like I get, don't changing the line, don't change the lineup. The team's winning. Yeah. But I knew it then, and then like in practices and shit. So it'd be like you know, like you do a two on one drill. So we'd have seven D. I'm I'm the seventh guy. So you know, we do like usually you do two rotations, two or three rotations through the D. Every yeah. single fucking time it was like two on ones or three on twos. So we go through once. I would get to go once. And then every single time it was like my turn to go again, it would be the last one. He'd blow the fucking drill down. Uh, I'm like, this motherfucker wants nothing to do. Yeah. For like the first three weeks when I was in Detroit, I was like, I wasn't a good person to be around because I could see what was happening. I'm like, man, this is it. I'm fucking done. And I was like pissed off. And then after like, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. This guy isn't going to dictate how I go through life. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to make the best of this. So I ended up just like, I would show up. I would practice as much as he would let me. I would run the stairs at Joe Lewis after every fucking uh, practice or whatever, just so he can't say I'm not fucking working. I go run the fucking stairs. And then I just planned all the parties. Some of my best buddies <laughs> in Detroit. In a way, it was actually fucking awesome. I really oh. sort of. <laughs> Hockey-wise, like, my first game in Detroit. So, <laughs> I mean, it was this is a fucking joke. So we like had a home game and Ian White took like a puck to the face and he couldn't play the next night. And we were playing the next night in St. Louis and Babs didn't have enough time to call somebody up from Grand Rapids to play. So he had to play me. So we're going into St. Louis and I'm like, okay, fuck, he's got to play me. I'm in the lineup. You know, the guys are all pumped for me. They're like, all right. I'm like, yeah, fucking right. I'm like, all right, I got to do something here. Try and do something, whatever. So get in the fucking lineup. I think I played 
like 30 seconds the first period, maybe. A uh, second wow. period, I think, I don't think I had a shift, maybe one. But that's wow. not halfway through the game. So, yeah, not playing. I'm, I'm just standing there. I'm like, man, this is a fucking joke. But I'm like, whatever. So I sit there. Now it's like two minutes left in the game. Tie game, building's going bananas. And there's a change. And the D coach panics because it's kind of a scramble. It panics. I have checked out of this game an hour and a half ago. My team is <laughs> killing me. I'm like, I'm not fucking playing. And he taps me. He's like, go. I'm like, I turn around. I go, you fucking serious? He's like, go. I'm like, okay. I go to jump over the board. I trip over my own feet, fall right on the blue line. I get up. Alex Steen is coming down with a. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, my feet are fucking killing me. I'm like, strong side post, strong side post. Just keep him to the outside. So I go back to the strong side post. He whips around the back of the net. Cronwall was out there with me. Cronwall's supposed to pick him up when he goes to the other side of the net. Cronwall's got his head up his ass at this moment. He's fucking lost. I'm like, oh fuck. So now Steen's in the corner. And so I beeline over there and I'm like, I am going to put this guy in the upper deck. So I go to run him. He does a quick little turn. I trip over my own feet again. Go head first into the fucking boards. I'm like, holy fuck. Pick myself up. I go back to the front of the net. Steen like took it to the net. Now this is like worst case, my ultimate nightmare. Takes it to like the net. Jimmy Howard saves it. But the puck comes. To, now I have the fucking puck, which is the last thing I want. I'm like, holy fuck. As I go behind the net, I'm like, I'm going to take a look in the middle, and I'm looking on the boards. If there's nobody there, I'm chipping this puck off the glass, and I'm getting the fuck off the ice. So I look in the middle. There's nobody there. There's nobody on the boards. I'm like, this puck is out. Just going to go chip it out. I go to chip it out. The puck bounces. I shoot it 15 rows into the stand. So I, game penalty. Oh, no. I like turned away from the bench. It's just so bad you didn't see me. And I was like, I, I, I had to laugh. I'm like, this <laughs> And then, and then the next day, right back into the press box, that was it. Oh, uh, man. How many games after that one did you sit out? Oh, fuck. That was <laughs> – that would have been early November, and the next game I played was against the Calgary Flames December 23rd. Oh, yes. So that would have been – oh, yeah. We did like a trip. We went to Vancouver. We went Vancouver, Calgary, and then Christmas break. And so, like, I'm part, I'm planning the parties, like, I'm going on the road, and I'm like, oh, perfect, I'm like, catch up with this buddy, I'm going out here, any guys want to come, you know, this is basically like a paid vacation for me. And so, we go into Vancouver, we get the shit kicked out of us, like, 5 nothing. Now, we're leaving right after the game, we're playing Calgary the next night, December 23rd, right before Christmas, then I'm going to spend Christmas here, my family's here, all this shit. And so, I'm on the plane, I got a big night out, like, planned out in Calgary, so I'm like this with a bottle of wine in the back of the plane. And I get a tap. Hey, Mike, it's fucking bad. I turn and I go, what do you want? He's like, you're in tomorrow. I go, no, I'm not. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, you're in tomorrow. Turns around. Todd Bertuzzi taps me. He's like, hey, you're fucking in. I'm like, fuck, I could better put this fucking wine down. The only reason why I ended up getting back into it, I found this out from the goalie coach the next day. The only reason why I got in was, you know, we were kind of on a skid. We just got spanked by... Vancouver 5 nothing. We're kind of going back to Calgary where I played here a little bit. So Ken apparently had pulled Babs aside on the tarmac and told Babs, I don't give a fuck if you have to scratch Nick Lidstrom tomorrow. Mike Commodore is fucking playing in Calgary. So that was the only reason why I got back into the lineup. I had a pretty wow. good game here. And then Babs like let me play for like a month, I'd say. And then it was done. And then that was it. Wow. And then off to Tampa. But, yeah, uh, I, ne I ne never heard uh, never heard much good uh, about the man. I don't know him, but I, I do tell you this real quick. We were uh, when Craig Baruby was coaching us <clears throat> here with the Flyers. We had an off day. We came from somewhere, so we had a day where we weren't playing until the next day. So we had a few guys going out, and our ice time was at noon. So yeah. the guys come in. You know how you guys go through your routine. I'm, I'm sure you were. Did you really get after it before a game, warm up, or practice? I think I read something where you said I wasn't really. I did a few high knees and I was ready to go. It was but high knees and a couple of pot of coffee was my pot, pot of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> Riley, used to, Riley used to get into the coffee too, but uh, oh, but this was this was a day off, so we had to, to schedule a practice at noon. So all the guys are there; they're getting dressed, and Detroit guys are still on the ice. Some of the guys, and so I say to the 
<clears throat> one of the equipment guys, I'm like, hey, like, we're supposed to go on the ice in like 10 minutes and you guys are still out there. And Hexy's going to lose his fucking mind because Hexy was the GM and Chief was our coach. Yeah. And yeah. Chief's like, fucking figure out what's going on here. So I'm like, all right. So I'm talking to the boys <clears throat> next door with, with Detroit. And they're like, Bab said, sorry. That's, you know, we'll get off when we get off. And I'm like, okay. So I got to go tell Hexy and Chief, you know, not that they're going to be mad at me. Well, we want to talk to him, get him out here. So yeah. we got in that area where the boys used to play soccer in the Joe <clears throat> back behind both locker rooms. And uh, Babs finally comes out. So our guys are kind of like the guys that weren't skating were kind of kicking a soccer ball. And I'm like standing there. I got to see this. He comes yeah. out there and Hexy's like fuming because I mean, you know, if you're a player on our team, you're, you're sitting here waiting an extra hour to get on. Oh, it's not right. Yeah, 100%. You know, no, We had that ice time right. signed off. So Hexy's like, what, what are you doing? Like we have the ice at 12. Like our guys have been here and he's like, he, dude, he was looking for quarters. He didn't want to look at either one of those guys in the eye. Like he, he had his head down and he was talking and well, you know, uh, we had a practice that ran a little long and, and chiefs like, that's, that's not how it goes, man. Like, we were supposed yeah. to be on the ice 30 minutes ago. Dude, this guy never looked up once. And he goes, well, I mean, I'm not sure what you want me to say. Like, do you want me to say I'm sorry? And he's never looking at him. He goes, I, I guess I'm sorry, I guess, you know. And they're like, are you kidding me? And he's just like, and he just walks away. And they're like, was that an apology? Like, I guess I'm sorry. Like, but he never, he no. never looked up at either one of them. And I'm, our guys are just like snicker because, like, what's he thinking? First of all, a chief standing there, <laughs> fucking, oh, you know, yeah, you, I would, you know, would kick the shit out of him. And and Hexy was wound up, but I mean, they kept their cool. But it was, it was kind of see him kind of like cower a little bit was kind of funny because he's so he's fucking yeah. <laughs> He's like the, the the quickest way I would say to like sum him up is he's a bully, is what he is. And as soon as yeah. just look, like that situation right there, when you come fucking at him, he's gonna back off. But he is a fucking bully and a fucking terrible human being. When I got to, to Detroit, I was like, put put all your differences to the side. Like this is the last chance. Like, all right, we're on Team Babcock here. I sit down in the dressing room for the first time. Half the fucking team came up to me. I was like, hey, man, we loved it when you carved Babs in the paper. Fuck that. I'm like, <laughs> I literally just got here. I'm like, hey, uh, I don't know what to say because I'm like, man, I'm, I'm trying to be on Team Babcock here. Like, let's have fun. And yeah. Good year. And these guys are just fucking torching them. And I'm like, fuck, these guys hate them too. Perfect. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, yeah I, I knew a couple people that worked in management there that were good friends with my dad. My dad was in the league for a long time, so he was really good friends with them, and they didn't have anything – Really good no, to say. Not a good dude. 